This is Agapanthus orientalis and uh, Lily of the Nile. Probably the most used plant in California over the last 20 to 30 years. Um, but I think that's okay, you know. This still has its applications. It uh, has these beautiful strap-shaped leaves that are evergreen. Uh, again, we get in the uh, mid to low 20s and this plant is fine in that situation. Certainly they like coastal conditions as well. And here you can see this designer use these in a mass planting around a lawn edge. I like to use these in kind of tropical um, applications where, because I think the big fleshy leaf lends itself to that feel and, and uh, certainly the flowers which I'll include in photos, these are out of bloom right now, they're, they're finishing blooming and this uh, maintenance person has come in and deadheaded these already. But um, the flowers are very unique and uh, because they've been around and used so much a lot of people don't really like this plant. But um, I still think in the right application it's a really beautiful plant. There's also dwarf varieties of these which I'll cover in another video. So spacing wise uh, you can see that this plant right here these tend to clump and this designer has used these at about three to four feet on center. If you do that uh, you know they will fill in over time uh, it's just going to take a while. I would tend to use these at about 24 inches on center. They're going to clump anyway. I'd rather get those filled in sooner than later. You're also seeing a lot of variation in the size of each of these plants. A lot of that can be attributed to, um, as I understand it, reproducing these from seed. So you get a lot of variation. You see this big vigorous guy here and littler leaves over here and much smaller leaves on this plant. There is some variation in these, so um, be careful as a designer what you end up getting. You want to try and get the consistency if you're going to mass these together. Uh, one of the big complaints with this plant is uh, snails love it. Because of these deep areas between the leaves and how moist that stays, it's good cover for snails. So yes, if you have these, you're probably going to get snails with those and that's just kind of part of the package but I don't find that to be a big problem. You don't see that they're eating the plant so much as they live in it. Um, so if you're going to use Agapanthus I recommend that you uh, you know you use it for the the real stunning flower and there's also newer varieties now that have these dark dark purple flowers so check on available varieties you don't just have to go with the blue or the white which are the standard colors. They come in a number of different uh, shades now uh, compared to what they used to have. Um, drought resistant, these are quite drought resistant actually. They look better with regular water, but they can take a fair amount of drought. Um, they have this kind of tuberous fleshy root system and they divide uh, constantly and clump, but um, they seem to store up what they need in that root system to some degree so they can take uh, some low water. They're not going to look as good as if you keep them watered well. You can see on the back there, see some of that burn on the areas it's getting a little more sun. So that tells me that they're keeping the water low in this area and the ones that get in the sun aren't liking it as much. So if you really want these to look their best, give them a little water. And that's Agapanthus orientalis, lily of the Nile. Here's Agapanthus orientalis at the end of its bloom. Um, so these will need to be deadheaded now, and it's only once a year, it's not a big deal, but if you plant these in mass, just know that that's part of what the maintenance person has to deal with. The bigger the mass, the bigger the uh, workload. And here's the flowers, they, a lot of seeds on that flower head. And the way to deadhead these is essentially you just cut them right down to the very base. Whatever you don't cut will turn brown and stay on the plant. So if maintaining those, that's what I recommend is cut them all the way down to the ground. Just the flower stalk.